share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And good morning to all my South Shores neighbors. This is Sharon McNamara. You are, of course, listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Uh, I am here live in studio this morning. And um, we have, of course, Melissa Wallace is with us. Hello, Melissa. Hello. And Melissa is with us. So she is the Director of Operations here at Boston Connect Real Estate. And we also have um, another person with us today. Not sure her mic is on and active yet. Nope, it's not active yet, but we have Tracy Grady from the Grady team uh, here. She's a full-time agent with her husband here at Boston Connect Real Estate. And uh, Boston Connect Real Estate is the host as well as, um, I mean, the promoter and McNamara uh, broker team or the group, whatever we are these days. Um, Mel, that's not the right one. It's on the right. Sorry. (laughs) And we have Tim in studio. Hello, Tim. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. We just had to add another microphone. So um, hold on one second. So, Tim, we're going to be doing part two of our... Oh, good. Part two. Yeah. Part dos. Dos. um, Of our thing. So I'm going to have to try to figure out something here. Um, sorry, we're just playing around here. Um, we are also live streaming today on YouTube. So you can go to our YouTube channel uh, for Boston Connect Real Estate. So go to YouTube, Boston Connect Real Estate. And you can also, uh, I am on Clubhouse. I don't know if anybody is in there yet or not. So uh, we will figure all that out. Um, <laughs> so It's a hot mess in here, Tim. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Mel, why don't you take this over and let everybody know what our plan is and maybe give a quick recap of last week and what we discussed. Yeah. So um, again, we're here with Tracy Grady (laughs) from the Grady team. And last week we were sort of going off of our, uh, you know, we we put our professionalism hat on and uh, we got serious with you guys and we were talking about, um, you know, the NAR settlement. So the National Association of Realtors, um, settlement and explaining that and sort of going a little bit um, in the direction of the buyer and how it sort of um, impacts the buyer in today's market. Um, We will do a little recap and then we'll sort of get into, um, you know, the seller side of things. Um, So um, Tracy, why don't you hop on over here for a second? Yeah. Um, (laughs) So what we, we as gone. a company have been sort of talking about this nonstop, 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 nonstop. <laughs> and it is the most important thing that we have been talking it, it, about recently. And um, everywhere I go, it's the, it's the most popular question. Like yeah. working at the bar, um, I get it, um, every night I get somebody who comes in, it's like, <gasps> So sorry to hear. <laughs> what? Like, so sorry for your loss. <laughs> so sorry to hear about what's going on in the real. And I'm like, why is everybody like so negative on? Uh, yeah. I yeah. said, it, you know, it's not. It's not, you know, it's, I feel like it, it's sort of. A few bad apples. Yeah. A few bad apples. <laughs> and, you know, we're just, yep. we're moving forward and we, we just have to educate ourselves. And um, yeah. we've been talking a lot as a company, um, going through it and sort of going through the motions. Sharon's been leading some um, discussions here in the office. Um, but um, b- before we sort of get into the nitty gritty, I always like to give you uh, a moment to reintroduce yourself to all of our listeners yeah. that might not have listened to any of the hundreds of shows that you've been on. <laughs> um, so, hard to believe, yeah. yeah. Well, so why don't you uh, take a minute to um, introduce yourself to everybody? Yep. So my name is Tracy Grady. I'm part of the great team. My husband, Jim, and I are a team together here at Boston Connect Real Estate. Um, we live in Hanover. We have a couple of kids. Um, we primarily work here on the South Shore and um, 
yeah, that's pretty much uh, we're real estate agents. <laughs> I feel like I've said this so many times. I know. <laughs> Part I of the great team. Some, some people might have be, might be joining us for the first time. But, yeah. Um, so yeah. So what? So I want to do a recap, and you know, Sharon will jump back in soon. But um, you know, you you listened to the show last. I week. I did listen to the show last week. Let's of- give sort of a little bit of a recap of like. <clears throat> In general, what is this about? So it's, yeah, and I mean, it's like we started with a few bad apples. I mean, it started in a different state. And as we've said before, I've always felt that we've always done it right here at Boston Connect Real Estate that, um, I don't know, there's so much going on in here. My head is just like, I'm like, I can't even think straight right this second. Um, There's, you know, the... You know, we try to represent our sellers in the best possible manner. And I always feel as if when we go into, I mean, going into a seller's home and trying to explain how what's the best way to market your home, um, we've always been very upfront with the fact that the commission is shared, or we can talk about commission is shared, fees are shared, that we tend to, you know, go in. And Jim and I work a lot with uh, friends and family. So, you know, when people are talking about 6% and 5%, we tend to be more, we we are more of a 4% because we always work with friends. Can't talk about that. We can't talk about that. Okay. Not talking about that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can hear somebody in the background. I can hear but, somebody in the background. Um, so we yeah. can't talk about that. I get that. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Didn't yeah. mean that. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right. I'm going to go get <laughs> Um. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just, it's been sort of all over the news. Yeah. And, and we're just well, I feel like get... it's hard not to talk about that, but I will yeah. not discuss that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever's yelling at me, I will not discuss that anymore. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, it's been sort of all over the news and we're just sort of getting ahead of it. And like I said, we've been talking about it as a company um and and just sort of getting getting our mindsets in in, the world is not ending no we're figuring it out and there are things that are going to be changed um in in changing for you know buyers and sellers and we just have to move forward with that and and just sort of adapt um but uh i know sharon wants to sort of continue on with the discussion (laughs) when it comes to to sellers um, but yeah, you know, it, it, it is. It's, yeah. We're trying to learn. Most, yeah. We're trying to learn. Um, so yeah, Sharon. Yeah. Um, do you want to just go back on my microphone? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So not discussing. Yeah, we're not going to talk. Definitely okay. We're not talking about, numbers. Yeah. Not talking. I'm so sorry. We're all over I the place. I am so now. sorry. I'm just all over the place and I'm yeah. like yeah. trying to. You know, I can't up. do this in my, I have to I, do it in my seat. You go, go ahead. Change. I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> now I need my headphones. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. We're, sorry, I mean, we're, we're, we're all over the place here today. Here. Sorry about so that. So, um, yeah, so we don't talk um, we don't exact talk commissions. I mean, no, no, when no. we're in, it's it's hard because it's, when we're in our office, you're always allowed to do that. Yeah. So um, that's probably part of the reason well, why like, it fluffed you up a little bit. Yeah. There you go. And I always so, feel so. Yeah, there you that, go. Yeah. So we just want to make sure. I don't know why is it that I can't, I don't know what's this, going on in here this morning, Tim, but I feel like gremlins came in in the middle yeah, of the night like and a, I can't and hear anything. Hum. Yeah, there's there is a, a, hum. a hum. Yeah. All right. Tim, so, yes, can yes. We, can we start over? Yeah, no, we're gonna start over. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This so is usually a safe place. Uh, where you you want me to roll the already. intro again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like we should. All right, take two, stand by. Here take we go. Take two. Let's go back. Yep. Yep. So, um, so we're just having some mic problems here for people who um, aren't. You know, we don't we don't know why. So, anyways. Um, we are talking about the NAR settlement again, as you and um, Melissa were saying, it is something that we have been talking about nonstop. We are the first office in Massachusetts to have the MAR, which Massachusetts Association of Realtors, uh, to have their um, attorneys in their council with us. Uh, she's also the head of education. So we were the first office to do that last week. So um, that that was great. I mean, that was really good was to real, have her. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice that we were the first office to be able to do that. So, um, and it's a lot, it I is mean, a it's lot. a lot to take in. So mm-hmm. it's really hard to, you know, narrow it down to yeah how to figure out how to discuss, you know, with your clients and isn't right. Yeah. Something isn't right here. Um, so, uh, I'm just so distracted by this. So Tim, <laughs> 
Can you help me out here? <laughs> Melissa, can you come back for a second? Sorry. Okay, I'll do what I yeah. can. Yeah. We just have to put her microphone up, Melissa, because I can't really hear her on her mic. I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, it's I can't hear her on her mic. So, um, so turn her mic up. That would be great. All right, test to there. Test, test, test. Okay. All right. So in regard to the NAR, last Good morning, week. Good morning, Yeah, I know. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, Social Shore. Real me, estate roundtable. <laughs> yeah. So last week we discussed what is a real estate agent, what is a realtor, and we got down and dirty with that. So that worked out perfectly. Um, and then the other thing that we um, wanted to discuss this week is how does this actually affect consumers because mm -hmm. that's where my head is right now you know if you're on instagram and you're on tiktok and you're on this and you're seeing a lot of agents out there i'm sort of tired of the agents you know out there and they're just like they see a lot of people seem more concerned i'm not saying anybody locally by the way this is nationwide that this is taking effect but they seem more concerned about what is happening to them and then what's going to happen to the consumer and that's what i wanted to talk about today is how does this affect the consumer and i really want to narrow it down and uh, really get down into it and take it from a seller perspective and a buyer perspective so sellers are basically saying, oh, great, I don't have to pay a full commission. Is that what you're hearing as well yes, out there? Yes. That, yeah. And I think even watching it like on the Today Show and all the like the regular mm -hmm. shows, they're really coming out and saying this is going to be great for sellers and buyers because mm -hmm. people are not going to have to, mm -hmm. you know, spend a lot of money or come up with, fu you know, funds. And I'm like, well, that's not really that's yeah. not really the best way of saying it. I mean, that's probably mm -hmm. I just feel like they're depicting this as a yeah as not what it really is exactly and last week I talked about the New York Times and it was interesting because as I looked at things this week the New York Times is now starting to have like maybe a different mindset so uh, one of the things that New York Times said last week is no more six percent commissions now I can say that because that was their headline okay. right <laughs> no more six percent commissions and you know fees are going to be cut yeah. and sellers this sellers that and last week I also, and I know that you were listening. So last week I also got into, um, I'm so used to having Melissa on my left. So I have to sort of face you a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> there we go. Um, so last week we talked about how there are, there's two different uh, theories on this whole commission thing. All right. So I'm just going to go through that quickly. And I did, this is a recap from last week. I discussed what a real estate agent is, what a realtor is, why we're involved in this is because we are a realtor sure. office, right? National yep. Association of Realtors. Realtors. The settlement is NAR, National Association of Realtors. So the other thing is um, like how people are viewing this. So the other way mm -hmm. it was broker to broker. That's how we got compensated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would go to a seller and say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, in order for me to sell your house, this is what I charge. I charge this percent. Yep. All right. I'm just going to use round numbers rather than percentages. Okay. okay. And just say after all the calculations, let's just say that was $10,000. Okay. $10,000 um, goes to Boston Connect Real Estate. Okay. Then from there, and I treat myself like an agent, you know that yep. for Boston Connect, yep. right? So I'm yep. part of the McNamara Horton group. So we we are a team here at Boston Connect Real Estate other than me owning the company. Okay. So that entire percentage from that seller comes to Boston Connect Real Estate. Then Boston Connect Real Estate says to the other brokerages, that would be any other company, any okay? Other any company. other company that's out there, ABC, EFG, HIJK, LMNOP. One, two, three, real estate. Exactly. Yep. We say through MLS, we're going to cooperate with you and this is what I'm giving you. So it's a percentage, Yep. right? So we're doing that through MLS. That's how we talk to That's each other. That's how we talk to each other. Yep. yep. So once the property sells, you're the cooperating brokerage company or whoever is, Boston Connect Real Estate gives that company a check. Okay. Yep. That's how it was, broker to broker. Now what it's going to be is me as a listing agent will go to my seller and now my fee is less. Basically, this is what it's coming down to. Yep. My fee is less to the seller because I'm not giving a percentage away. Right. Isn't right. that a good way to sort of think of it? Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm not giving a portion like so I don't have to charge as much 
because I'm not giving anything away. Correct. Right. So yeah. I'm not giving half of what I charge the seller to anybody anymore. Yes. Right. That's, yeah. Right. So the commission could potentially be less for the seller. However, mm -hmm. the buyer's agent has to get paid. Right. And I don't think that anybody really fully realizes or understands how much work I actually had that. And it's, I think out there and I'll grab that. How much work goes into being a buyer's agent? Oh, it's it. I mean, you, yeah. And right now, I mean, we, we're really good at going into sellers homes and, and explaining, you know, our worth, our value and how we do our job on the buyer side. I feel as if, and we've been talking about this for a while because I took a, oh, the ABR, yeah. I, I took the ABR training last year mm -hmm. or two years ago. And I think I came to you and I said, this is what they're saying in mm -hmm. this class is that this is coming down the line, the DOJ and the mm -hmm. whole thing. And, and here we are today talking about it. Mm -hmm. We're really, really good with going in and selling our value to sellers. It just makes sense in your brain. And we've been doing it for so long mm -hmm. that we don't do it with buyers. Yep. So we take a, a buyer, a mm -hmm. buyer comes to us and they're like, we'd like to look at some houses. And we're like, fantastic. Let's go out. You know? Mm -hmm. So you go out with a buyer, you show them 10 houses, you write maybe seven offers for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, because in this market, it's really not a buyer's market. So you yep. are invested in this buyer, but you really don't have a contract mm -hmm. between you and the buyer. It's kind of an understanding that says, I will take you out, show you as many homes as you want to mm -hmm. see. And you kind of hope that that buyer is stays with you, but there's really nothing that stops that buyer from going into an open house someday without you yeah. and saying, I love this house. And the listing agent, you know, if they say they're not working with an agent and they mm -hmm. write an offer, you, you're really out. I mean, yeah. you've spent mm -hmm. 10 weeks, 10 yeah. homes written, you know, X amount of offers and you're really, and they we are saw, not entitled. Yeah. To, you know, and yeah. we saw a lot of that last year, I would say in the past couple of years too. And we were calling it buyer fatigue, right? Yeah. And I think that the buyers were getting frustrated because they weren't getting their offers accepted. And I oh. know that, you know, we were getting phone calls as a team. I'm sure you were getting them too. And it was like, you know what? I think I'm, I'm leaving my, my agent because, you know, we've put in seven offers and none of our offers have gotten accepted. Yeah. And it wasn't the agent's fault. No. It was just that the other offers were better. They're better offers. I mean, when you when you like when you have 10 offers on the table, it's mm -hmm. a lot of offers. And like you said, you put them into a spreadsheet, you take all of the personality out of it, yep. and you just look at what's I mean, mm -hmm. you've really got to have you, you know, have to put your best foot forward you have all to the have time. Your ducks in a row. And we were talking about the, um we were talking about this is that, you know, sellers that are not or I should say sellers that want to purchase, let me try to figure out how to say this on the right, sellers that are trying to buy something mm -hmm. on the other side, you kind of have to sell your house mm -hmm. in order to buy another house. Yeah. You cannot, that contingency of having your home mm -hmm. that needs to, even if it's the most beautiful home in the world and you know it's going to sell quickly, yep. when you have 10 offers in front of you and you have people without a contingency, yeah. it's it's just a better offer. So yep. it's it's... You know, it's a lot of work. It it's is. a lot of work being a buyer's agent. And the time and energy and the research and, you know, putting in the offers. It isn't like you're just whipping these up. I mean, you're looking at comps. You're trying yeah. to figure it all out. You're spending gas money. You're all over the place. I mean, we have a list out there of like 90 different things that we do as a buyer's agent, 90 different things that we do as uh, a seller's yeah, agent. Yep. Yeah. And so that's the, the thing is, is the value of a buyer's agent is real. It is very real. And my worry and concern is that there is going to be a large group of people who are no longer going to be able to afford to have a buyer's agent because the new way, now again, the settlement is um, in front of the courts now. The DOJ has to make a um, decision and it's in April, mid-April. They're going to make the decision if they're going to accept this lawsuit. This is, this is you know, this is what NAR has come up with. But the reason why they're doing it is because 416 million or 418 18 million, million is a lot less than the 1.1 billion or whatever it is yep. that was initially requested. And, you know, the DOJ could say no. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they could say no. And they could say, go back to the drawing board and ask for more money. Yeah. Right. I yep. doubt very much they're going to say, OK, you can give less money. But but what we have heard in the Mar attorney said this to us that um, regardless of what the DOJ decides on this settlement, NAR will be proceeding forward with the conditions that are within this 
within this settlement. settlement. Yeah. So the changes for us as real estate agents and for the consumers, so they know is one, we no longer can offer uh, compensation through MLS. Okay, so that vehicle is gone. It's not going to be there. It's not going to be a little there. window that says, you no. know, this is what's no. being offered. And the reason why they did this, Trace, is because they were saying that we buyers were suddenly saying that we were steering them from other properties. Yep. So there was a part of this that actually settled like probably six months ago, like MLS pin settled. Okay, that's our MLS. That's our MLS. You suddenly started to notice that that percentage that we were given as buyers agents okay mm -hmm. and it was always it was always uh, the sellers could always negotiate whatever their price there's no standard anything no. okay so whatever that's that kind of where i was going in the beginning yeah, without the beginning. using straight numbers yeah. yeah like it's always been when you go into a seller it's always negotiable mm -hmm. it's not a flat rate there mm -hmm. is not like a like like the new york times said yeah a no. 6% flat rate that's never no. been we always go in with, you know, yeah. tell us about, you know, yeah. what you expect, what you're looking for. Exactly. So, I mean, I always think it's always been very clear that mm -hmm. whatever percentage we decide on, we are going to offer a certain amount to the mm -hmm. buyer to bring the buyer in. Yeah. Not steering because you have to show every pro I mean, oh, yeah, you if, have my, to. if my buyer wants to see a property, I'm going to show it to them. Yeah, exactly. It's not like I'm going to be like, well, let's see how much. Yeah. Well, you know, how much are they offering for compensation? Right. Yeah. So the thing that's so funny about this, and I'm so glad that you're sitting here with me today too, is because to say that that number isn't negotiable is ridiculous because yeah. one of the things I love about having a boutique office is, you know, um, I can make decisions at my level. I don't have to go anywhere further up to some, you know, big giant, you know, corporate head, yeah, corporate yeah, head corporate anywhere. Head. Yeah. And I will say you and uh, your team and Donna Bagney's team came to me a couple of years ago and said, Donna said, I have a person with a hardship sh situation that, you know, the house is basically a tear down. Tear down. They're yep. living in it. She was trying to help them get her and her adult daughter uh, with some disabilities get into another property, yep. another home of some sort, someplace Something safe. Something better suited for them. Exactly. Yep. And came to me and she said, Sharon, do you mind if I don't take a commission on my side? She was like, I'll give Boston Connect their side. And I was like, no, absolutely. I won't take any commission at all. Yep. So Boston Connect won't take anything. Then you had the buyer and mm -hmm. you came to me and said, Sharon, I'm not going to take a commission on that I'm side not either. It. Yep. Don't need. Yep. Yeah. It was a hardship situation. Yep. And like, that's what I love about being a boutique, that we were able to do that. Yep. And we were able to get that family as a team into a nice, safe place for yep. her and her daughter. Yep. Right. Um, and then obviously you had the builder for it. Correct. So the house yep. came down, the house went yep. up and you were Sold able to yep. sell that. Yep. Right. So those are the things that to say that it isn't negotiable is, is laughable. Yes, exactly. It's it is. Laughable. Yeah. It's a, that's a joke. Yeah. Yep. It's it, always negotiable. Yeah. You know, when I generally don't negotiate is when people are like, well, you know, I, I can do it. So-and-so can do it for this and so-and-so can do it for that. Well, and I, can blah, blah, blah. I can sell it myself. myself. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Hey, you have to compare apples to apples. Yep. I'm fine with whatever you do. If yep. this isn't a hardship situation and you're just being, a, a, you know, being cranky, yeah. well, I'm all set. I don't I'm even, I don't, I don't want to work for someone cranky anyways. Yep. For the most part, I don't have any of those no. people, but so mm, now, <laughs> I, know, I know you have, I remember you standing in my office crying one time. So, but now, so where we are is I work for if I'm the listing agent, the contract is between me and the seller, yep. as it always has been. Which I think you explain it so well. And, mm. it, and it's funny because it does pertain. I'm your example is yeah. I work at a bar. Yeah. And, and I wait on people all night long. Yes. And I have a bar back who works very hard for me all night long. He, mm -hmm. You know, they're always behind me, helping me out. Love mm -hmm. my bar backs. But to your point, at the I give you your check. You tip me on that check. Mm -hmm. You don't say, hey, how much is your bar back going to yeah. get? I mean, it's, it comes to me yeah, and we distribute it out. That's what I charge. Yeah. And this is and what I do. I distribute it out. I, distribute I don't, it out. I don't take it all. I share it with somebody yeah. else who's bringing in, doing me a huge favor and my seller a favor, bringing your buyer in. Yeah. And Taking the time, which is time consuming 
to show the property, mm -hmm. write the offer. I mean, yeah, this is a lot to being a buyer's agent. A lot, a yeah. lot. And and the thing is, is I wonder in where it changed, right? So it's like as the market has increased, I guess our compensation has increased, but it's always been sort of, you know, the, you know, the same, you know, for us, I'm just going to talk about me. Like I've always sort of charged the same amount, yeah. regardless of what mm -hmm. anybody else was charging, right? Right. So I always sort of charge the same. I've been doing this for 21 years. It's always been the same for me. And that's where I feel like, you know, the sale prices of homes, like is that number sort of cushioned in there, but whatever. But now they're saying it's different, whatever. I've always thought that the seller paid me. I then took my money and chose to pay, go through MLS. Yep. Now it's the seller's, it's like, all right, well, I'm saying my, my cost of doing business is actually decreased. That's a good way of putting it, isn't it? Yeah. My cost of doing business is now decreased because I can no longer offer compensation through MLS to buyer's agents. Correct. But what I have to make sure to say to my sellers is, please understand that this doesn't mean that the buyer's agents aren't going to request from you to pay them. Right. The part I don't understand about this and why I feel that this is messier is why would a seller and maybe we can have some callers, why would a seller pay a buyer's agent to work against them? To work against them. Yeah, because yeah. if I'm going to pay you, yeah. but you're going to negotiate against me, you're working with the buyer. Yeah. The house is on the market for 500000 You say, hey, I only think it's worth four seventy five. Yeah. And then you're going to ask the guy to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I like so yeah. I don't know. So I, I think that somebody needs to be calling us to have a round table and yeah. just like talk this through people. Yeah. I, it doesn't make sense. It right? doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So the yeah. fear is that if sellers now, because of the national media, they are sort of, you know, backpedaling a little bit now. If the national media telling sellers, hey, you don't have to pay this full amount anymore. You only have to pay your listing agent, which you only paid your listing agent before. Anyway. It was my choice to give away a portion of that. Now you, as the buyer's agent, are going to have to find a way to get compensated. Yeah. And okay. I think that's, talk about, an, that's an awkward conversation. That's a, that's a tough it is a tough conversation to have. And I know we had a caller last week and I think that where he was starting to go with it is it's the amount that we're being compensated. And the thing is, is we're compensated on the sale amount, like, right. So Correct. the net sale. And so the, the prices of homes have continuously oh. gone up. So like, that's why that, you know, that number continues to go up. It's always been a percentage. But and that's just because it's a seller's market right now. Right now. Right now. It's And it's been mm -hmm. a seller's market for a while mm -hmm. because the inventory is still excruciatingly low. Yes. Um, I think there are, like in Hanover, Jim was saying yesterday, I do think two houses came on. We have three houses. As of yesterday, there were three homes on the market in Hanover. Mm -mm. Three homes. Yeah. That's just, that's, that's, that's nothing. Yeah. We used to have three months worth of homes mm -hmm. on the market at yeah. any given time. Mm -hmm. And right now we don't even have like a week or two. And that's why right now people are buying with emotional value, right? So that was a whole nother show. Yeah. So now the changes with this settlement are one, I can no longer offer compensation through MLS. I listened to a webinar yesterday and it was really good. And they, they did a really great job on this. And they basically were saying, not only can we not offer it through that vehicle of like MLS, the only place it could be is on our Boston Connect, on our Boston Connect, Connect website. I'm still, the jury's still out. Can it be on your personal website? I have no idea. Can it be on personal <clears throat> websites for the, for the house itself? I don't know. Again, a lot of gray area with this, but there are a lot of people that are coming and they spoke about this yesterday, which is interesting because it came up at our round table on Tuesday. A lot of agents are out there saying, well, I'm just going to create my own little app and my own little website and agents can just go there and they can find out what the compensation is. If the seller is willing to compensate them. Yeah. So sellers, if you're out there, please know you can still compensate a buyer's agent. A buyer's agent. Yep. It just isn't going through me anymore. It's going directly to the buyer agent's broker. Okay. That's the really the only difference on that. And there are a lot of things. If you want the most amount of people to come and see your house and view your house, because not that an agent would steer nope. anybody away. Nope. It's that the buyer may not be able to afford to do it. Right. 
think. I mean, if you're you're dealing with somebody who's already in tight numbers, mm -hmm. that they have a budget, they've been saving. I think somebody said this last week, or somebody said it at our roundtable on mm -hmm. Tuesday. You have buyers who have been saving every last penny to put their twenty percent down. Don't have. Mm -hmm. They're not working with a budget like a seller has a budget. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, like the five hundred thousand yeah. dollar home, they have a budget of money. Sellers. Buyers coming in have limited funds because yeah. they are, they've been saving to buy a home. Yeah. So, and even just think, I mean, people who have saved twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars, you know, that's a lot of money. But you know, once then, okay, what type of loan are you getting into? Do, are, yeah. do, are you in a loan? Do you qualify for a loan that's three percent down? Do you qualify for a loan that's five percent down? So now take that, right? I mean, we should do some numbers and calculating here. So yep. let's just say if so, like a first time home buyer, let's just say, what do you think that is? Like three fifty to four hundred yep. around here. So let's just take let's, a four hundred thousand four hundred thousand dollar house, okay? And they have to put five percent down. <laughs> that's twenty thousand dollars. Yep. Okay. Yep. So if that's one of the fees, so now we have twenty thousand dollars. That's just part of buying the house. It's your down payment, so it's going towards that. Okay. Then your closing costs. Let's mm -hmm. just say, like I, these numbers are made up because I have no idea. I'm Let, the same. Let's just say your closing costs are ten thousand dollars. Okay. Now you're up to thirty thousand dollars. Okay. So on that four hundred thousand dollar house, if you're going to uh, pay a buyer's agent, um, see this is where we get into a little bit of numbers, but I'm just going to round it up and just say another ten thousand. Another ten thousand. Yeah, okay. Just, yep. So I'm just going to say it's another ten thousand dollars because that's the number we used before. I'm not saying that these numbers calculate to any percentage. I'm just throwing out numbers because I don't just want to get this an idea. Yeah, just yeah, an idea. I don't want any antitrust violations <laughs> going on, please. That well, is. I already started that off, so don't yeah, worry. Even, so <laughs> just thinking about that, is, but it wasn't bad. I was yeah. just catching you. I was just like, no, no, no. Tracy? Yeah. <laughs> so that's $40,000. $40,000. Yeah. So right. how many people, first time home buyers, have saved $40,000? So I'm, I'm curious why, how is, how are first time home buyers? And it's not even first time home buyers. I said this last week too. What about somebody who had maybe, you know, a medical condition and they had to go through their funds, their savings, right? What about somebody who went through a divorce and they've, they have no liquid money, right? Yep. What about all these people that don't have it? Right. Now people are saying we can put it into the loan. We have a caller. So I'm going to take the caller um, and then we'll get right back into that. Hello, caller. Who are you? Hi, and who do I have? It's Jay. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, through all this, the seller um, is still going to provide the, let's just say, 6% uh, percentage of the um, sale of the house. We're only saying that because the CNN yeah, okay. came out with yeah. that. Okay. So I'm not saying that that is what's in the, there is no standard because we legally can't talk about percentages just so you know, Jay, yep. but you brought that up and I'm just saying it's, you brought it up because that's what CNN said. That was their headline. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. So, but okay. So let's just forget about the percentages. So at the end of the day, nothing has changed except for uh, the possibility of um, this law or whatever is stating to the seller's agent how they should dispense their money. Mm -hmm. The percentage of the sale of the house. It's, Am I correct? It, it's like decoupling yeah. the, the, the commission. So the, the whole commission doesn't come to me anymore. Because but it, you, the whole commission used to come to me as the listing agent. Then I would take whatever percentage. We, our mm -hmm. office, we always did half. So half would go half. to the other agent, right? Whatever always. company they worked with, right? Yeah. What they're saying is they don't want that anymore. Now... If the seller chooses to still compensate, they don't have to. They, and, and honestly, like they could have, before I could have discussed what I was willing to give a buyer's agent, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, it was my money because they were paying me. Right. Now, Jay, I have to go in there and say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this is what I'm charging, but I want you to be prepared because when a buyer's agent comes to you, they're going to have a new form. It's MAR 310 is the new form, and it's an addendum to the offer that basically says, Jay, as the seller of your home, my – this." so it's coming from the buyer, yep. okay? Jay, as the seller of your home, 
and I have the buyer, I am the buyer of your home. I am requesting, Jay, that you compensate my buyer's agent this percentage. So now the buyer's agent is actually negotiating with you directly for their their part of Instead their, of us doing it up front. Instead of us doing it up front. we sign a listing agreement. Exactly. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Um, well, it makes sense how you're describing it, but in reality, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair that, um, you know, the years you guys have done, it's had its own process. It's worked out for everyone. Mm-hmm. Why change something that... <laughs> why? that okay. And I'm going to tell you an why. excellent question. Yeah. So, so you're going yeah. to take, you're gonna take the homeowner who's going to go, now I have to pay additional because that's what it's come out to. Yeah. I mean, at least that's my... Yeah. So, and here's the thing though. So chances are the fee that I charge them, because remember, if you gave me, I'm just going to use ridiculous numbers yeah. right now. Okay. If I charged yeah. you 20%, okay. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. obviously clearly ridiculous. If I charged you 20%, you would pay me 20% at the time of the sale. And then what I would do is I have another contract with MLS that basically says I am going to compensate cooperating agents half of that. So I put in MLS mm-hmm. 10%. So if another agent from another company has a buyer, they would then say, okay, I have to, I know I'm getting paid 10%. The buyer didn't have to worry about it, yeah. how, wh- how they were getting paid. Now what will probably happen is I just go to you and just say, okay, listen, I'm only worried about what I am getting paid, which would have been the 10%. Yep. Now, it's up to the buyer's agent to negotiate for what you will pay them. When they submit an offer. When they submit an offer. So that number could decrease. What's going to happen is, is a lot of sellers are going to say, no, I'm not going to pay anything extra. Why would I, why would I pay the buyer's agent? They work for the buyer, have the buyer pay. Exactly. Right. So wh- what's going to happen is now they, the, the funny thing about this is, is that they were worried about steering and, so staring would be okay if 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 I was only offering 0.005 percent. Yep. They were worried that the buyer's agent would say, "All right, I'm, I'm not, not going to show, show the buyer exactly. that house." That was not happening. Ethically, I, you can't do. That. You, can't you can't do that. I mean, you, you can't do that to your buyer. No, You're like that could be the perfect house for them. Exactly. Yeah. And if so, there were agents out there that were doing it, they should leave the business, and yeah. they they should be the ones that are feeling this pain. Um, so that's what they were worried about. Then MLS PIN, our MLS got sued, and then that number ended up on Zillow. So the buyer always knew how much their agent was getting compensated. With this new law, one of the requirements, regardless if it goes through or not with the DOJ, is that we have to have buyer agent agreements with all of our buyers. And in that contract, it would say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I am going to help you with these 90 things that we do uh, on this sheet of paper. To help you find a home. To help you find a home, to negotiate on your behalf, to do all these things. However, you are going to owe me, now we'll just go back to that ridiculous number, 10%. Okay. Now the buyer is responsible for that, to pay that. So now, Jay, your house is on for sale. You decided, okay, maybe maybe I don't want to pay the buyer's agent. So now you're just paying me as your listing agent. So I have my compensation. Now Tracy shows up with her buyer and she puts in that form and says, okay, Jay, um, as the seller, the buyer is requesting that you pay them as well 10%. Again, Anybody just dialing in? These are fake, fake, these fake, not fake, fake numbers. I'm just putting it out there. Um, so you, as a seller, say, "No, I'm not paying you. I'm not doing it." Right. Even though when you bought your house, chances are you didn't pay your buyer's agent either out of your own pocket. And there's another theory on that, but I'm not getting into it. But I do think you need to know <laughs> upfront that you could have always done that. Yes. There's always the opportunity. There's always been a contract mm-hmm. that you can have your buyer sign that says. Mr. Buyer, I'm going to take you out and show you houses. 
in in turn, and when you decide on a home, I will be compensated regardless. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Yes. We could do that. So, so you could always do that, but you'd have to do it for every client. Yeah. You, you can't like you can't can't pick and choose. And now it won't choose. be a choice. Now it will be yeah. you know, mandated through that. NAR, not a state law through NAR, our association. So now Tracy has the buyer. She wants to buy your house. You say no. Okay, Jay. You're like no. I'm not paying. You have your buyer no, pay. I'm not taking that offer. Nope. Yep. So. Now, Tracy has to go back to her buyer and say, unfortunately, Jay doesn't want to, he doesn't think that he should be paying me. Yep. So we have this contract. So you are, if you buy this house, you are obligated to pay me this percentage. The buy, I just did quick numbers. I mean, I just did like. But then you can't get blood from a stone. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if there's not a, if there's not a pool of money yeah. that the buyer has put aside mm -hmm. for you as their buyer agent. Yeah then you, you know, you don't get paid. So here's where our problem is, Jay. And I know you listen to our show all the way. And I, I hope that you can feel like the genuine that is within us as yeah. an office and as a team and as everything. My, the moral compass and the struggle that all of us are having is we never want to get in between our clients. So Tracy potentially could be in a point and saying, you know what, Jay would accept your offer if you didn't have to pay me. I want you to have the home of your dreams. We yep. have been showing you houses. houses. For some We were talking to Jess Page, full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate. She has she was showing somebody houses for 18 months. Yeah. The 18 mm -hmm. months. And I like, can imagine. Right? And th that think about that. Like, she has three young kids, so she's paying for a babysitter. She's paying for the gas. She's doing showing the research. Up, yeah. She's showing up. You know, doing all these things, 18 months, offers not getting accepted. The chances now are going to be even greater. And I, if now Jay says, yes, I, I, I'm happy to do that, but I'm not paying the buyer's agent. Yeah. What are you going to say to your buyer? Well, you, you Sorry? Yeah. yeah. Sorry? I, I mean, of course it all comes down to money. But let me ask you this. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much the seller's agent is doing the majority of the work. What mm. does the buyer's agent do? Not really. So no. as a buyer's agent, mm -hmm. so I'm going to spend four or five hours on a Sunday or Saturday or Sunday or during the week or whatever. I'm going to actually jump anytime my buyer calls and says, I want to see a property. Mm -hmm. I'm getting in my car. I'm driving. I'm going to show the property. I'm going to write up the offer. I'm, I mean, do research, a, pull comps. Yeah. Pull comps, research. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of work. Things. Yeah. And set her up, <clears throat> uh, set that person up with a home inspector, yep. set them up with, um, you know, a and here's company. This I is mean, what I love about having a buyer's agent on the other side, Jay, too, is I know like that the buyer's agent, I'm getting a pre approval letter, I'm getting all that. It's going to be so I feel as if, even though my portion of what I paid will, it yep. will end up increasing. Yep. the amount that I get paid for my side, because we're going to have a lot of buyers come to us unrepresented, which scares the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. I did. Yeah. So that scares me. So I'm going to have to do the work of two agents. So this buyer's agent, they do a lot of work. If there's an issue like, hey, I can see that they did the basement over. Tracy is going to go online, see if she can find the permits. If they're not there, she's going to go to town hall. She's going to pull the jacket. She's going to yep. say, hey, it doesn't look like they had any permits on this property. Were you aware of that? Hey, did you realize that there was um, whatever? Uh, uh, there's a subdivision that's going. Now, we don't always know that. But if you did, right. you would find out. You, you would know. find out. I mean, there's, there's more to it. I think you see what a seller's agent does more because there's just so much more involved in it. It's picture i mean you go out you make sure that the house is ready to be shown there's pictures being done you're doing open houses you're marketing so there is a lot but there's a lot on both sides i think i think the buyer's agent doesn't get enough credit sometimes as the seller's okay. agent does i might be ignorant for a second but i would just think that uh, a buyer's agent um would just be like bringing a person who wants to buy a house not knowing that they don't i would assume that that's all they're doing it's the education we need out here to yes. uh and what you guys actually do as a seller and a buyer's agent and again if i'm buying a house if i'm selling my house and a buyer's agent comes along with you guys i'm just thinking oh well that buyer's agent's just bringing a person to buy my house yeah. nothing more nothing less. oh no there's a yeah there's a lot more that goes behind it that you know and yeah. it's a relationship that you have with that's that buyer yeah Honestly, I think that's what the general public thinks. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's what I would think. No, that's probably, I, I think you're pretty. Off. 
and doing things, but I wouldn't think a five age award. Yeah, I didn't realize that we were on Clubhouse too. And Anna, I think, has a response to what Jay is asking right now. Do you have the oh, here. <laughs> yeah, let me just say it. Um, yeah. It's a little too noisy here, but. Uh, yeah, what is your question? It says, if we're doing the work of both, will we continue to charge what we were get charging before? So, Jay, this is what Anna is asking. So, Anna is um, a friend realtor of mine uh, from uh, Pennsylvania, and she comes on uh, the air with me a lot. So, I have a lot of agents that are listening nationwide um, through this other app. So, what she's asking is, if we're doing the work of both agents, are we going to get paid for that? And my response is probably not. I mean, I, I would say that we should be. It, there's just so much that goes on in the back that, end. Are we talking dual agency at that point? And then that's another show. <laughs> so then that's <laughs> dual agency. But I do feel like in the scenarios that I'm giving you, Jay, let me ask you as, as a person who's out there, if you were selling your house, do you see an advantage to continue to pay the buyer's agent? Or do you think, hey, let somebody else deal with it? Well, if I was going to sell my house, and my priority was to sell my house, no matter what the situation is. I think that everyone who's involved with selling that house should be compensated. It's only fair. I mean, would you, would the average person go to work 40 hours a week and do all the work and get expect no compensation? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we what we need to look at. Mm -hmm. You know, people, we, we survive by working and, and um, earning an income weekly, monthly, yearly, to, to live. Mm -hmm. And why should we, um, in reality, expect someone to work and not get compensated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, and, yeah. and but do you think as the seller that you would be willing to pay a fuller, co like a, a compensation to both agents? Keep it the same. Well, yes, I, in fairness, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fairness. Yeah. Um, when so, it comes down to a buyer having to pay anything additional to buying the house, yeah, I think most people would expect that they should, but is the funding there? Because as we know how the market is today, to even try to buy a house is difficult. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of programs out there, uh, but again, it's education and fairness. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. You know, but yes, yes would be my answer because yeah. I don't think it would be fair that someone should be working. And that's why I brought up because I always thought that, oh, by his agents just bringing a person to look at my house and buy it. Mm -hmm. I, I did not know how much work they put in put into it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and again, like I said, one of my agents, Jess Page, again, one of my agents, full-time agent, she's been working with a couple for 18 months. And here's the other thing, like it was interesting how you said if somebody's working 40 hours a week, they, they deserve to get compensated. Now try working 18 months and you don't get paid until the house is sold. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty, that's sad. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not right. Ethically, it's not right. I know. And then the other part of that is what we were saying is these this this new agreement, you know, that, you know, the buyer agent agreement has always been there, by the way. It's just that, you know, some states mandated it. Some states don't. Some agents used it. Some agents right. didn't. And for me, I've just always, you know, I've always just had this loyalty with my buyers. I've, you know, maybe once or twice I've had somebody like go to an open house and they were sort of persuaded by that listing agent, hey, you should put the offer in with me because you're going to lose it if you don't. Um, that should never be said, by the way. But I think, you know, now having these agreements, I feel like it's really strapping buyers and consumers to do what they feel is best for them. And this whole thing is supposed to be about making it safer for, you know, right. better yep. for them. Now, our, you know, our guy at the top there came out last week and said, um, you know, that, oh, this is great. Finally, realtors are going to be held to lowering commissions so buyers can buy more houses. Hello, mm -hmm. Mr. President. If you'd like to have a roundtable, <laughs> yeah. Sharon McNamara, <laughs> Tracy Grady, and a Here bunch of agents throughout the country who are currently on Clubhouse would love to have a roundtable with you and uh, Kamala, or, you know, yeah. to let you know what the truth is about this. Yes. That, that yeah. is not going to that happen. That does not depict at all. Let's talk about veterans, people yeah. who have 
served for our country, whether they have, you know, they've served for our country. They deserve to have, you know, these, you know, the benefits that they have. VA loan does not allow them to pay for anything nope. out of their loan. Nope. They can't, they can't increase that. I'm going to give a couple more scenarios. We're going to have to go into part three. So Trace, you yep. can join me next week on that. We'll get the microphone <laughs> situation we'll taken. Straightened, straightened out. So I straightened don't out. Yeah. <laughs> start talking off the cuff. <laughs> yeah. Nope. That's fine. We'll figure it all out. But, you know, now think about this. You have a person, it's, we're just going to go back to this other scenario, whether the numbers below it are right or not. $400,000 house. They have $20,000 that has to go towards their, um, they're doing a, the a conventional, right? Yep, a conventional, conventional loan. Yep. $20,000 is their down payment that they've saved. $10,000, say, give or take for their closing costs, right? And prepaids and all of that, give or take. I don't even know how true or accurate that number is. And then on top of that, they're supposed to pay, I'm just putting a flat number out there, let's say it's $10,000 for a, for their buyer's agent, okay? Now, another thing I want to say, as the broker of this company, I want everybody who's out there listening, understand this. The, the Your agent is not receiving $10,000. Mm. Your agent works for a company, and Jay, you brought this up last week with me. Yeah, so that money then goes to the brokerage. Right then the agent is on a split with the company. Companies don't run on their own. No. Right? So, like, you have to put the lights on. You have to have... We have a roof over our head here. We have... I, we have showing time for... Like, we have all these tools and technology, features. technology. Everything. We have programs. Yes. We have... So, that is not free. So, the agent is not getting that, to that whole amount. I want to make that clear for everyone listening. Then... Um, other than that, okay, so now they have to come up. Let's just say they've saved $30,000 and they don't have the additional $10,000. So people are saying this, all right, we'll just increase the sale price to four ten, And now they can pay the, their, now you're asking somebody to finance, finance their commission yep. over 30 years, which that's another story. So, yeah. okay, let's just we say do. that, right? Yeah, that's, we do. Okay, the we seller do. says, fine, I'm, I'm willing to do that. If I'm your listing agent, Jay, this is what I have to tell you because my fiduciary responsibility is to you, okay? So this is how I feel a conversation might go. Jay, I, I think it's great that you're willing to increase the sale price so this, the buyer's agent can get paid through this. But as your, as your listing agent, and my fiduciary responsibility is to you, I just need you to fully understand that there is a possibility that your house is not going to appraise at 410. When I did my comps, I really was struggling to get us to 375. I feel like we'll probably be able to push it to 400, but I cannot, I just, I just don't know if it will appraise for 410. And that happens. And that happens. And that happens, especially in this market where it's, people it's, are overbidding yeah, to get the it's happened. offer accepted. It just happened in our office recently to somebody. Yeah. So now, Jay, as the seller, are you willing to risk the time to lose maybe a potentially better buyer that doesn't have to pay their buyer's agent or doesn't have the same financial squeeze, are you willing to take the risk? I I would not. And then also, by mm. with that example, isn't that what's going on in New York? Mm. Uh, I'm sure it's going on everywhere. Yeah. It, it, you know oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. <laughs> I need two hours. So next week, I know Alyssa McNamara um, is talking about Medicaid um, after us, Jay. So I hope you'll join us next week. When I hear the music, that means I have to start wrapping up. And my producer okay, is... Okay, well, no. thank you for your time. Keep the good work. All right. We'll Thanks, see you Jay. next week, Jay. And uh, next week, we're going to have part three on this Hi, conversation. Chris. Hopefully, I can include... I didn't realize that Clubhouse was actually working because I couldn't see anyone. If you want to listen to our past shows, go on to our YouTube page. You can find last week's show. You'll find this week's show. Uh, probably ignore the first you know minute or two um and <laughs> we will see you next week uh so have a great week melissa will be here tuesday uh doing the show at 6 15 to 7 so i hope you can join her then i don't know who's with her but possibly me bye everybody bye tim have a great day oh happy easter happy easter everybody yep it's you so let's make the most of this beautiful